Let's take a look at the basic workflow. For this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and start with a brand new project. So the very first step in starting a new project is to import a model. And you'll see if you don't have any models imported here, first, your models tab will be empty and there will be a button for import model. You'll see here that it also says that you can click on project import to import a model or you can go ahead and drag and drop a model right from a Windows Explorer window. I'm just going to leave the default settings. And here's our model. So once we have the model in our scene, there's a couple of things that we may need to do. Um, first, by taking a quick look at this model, I can see here, based on where the shadow is falling, it appears that our model has dropped through the floor a little bit. So here within our geometry tab, I'm going to select the model, and I'm just going to snap it to the ground just to make sure that we are actually sitting up on the ground. There we go. So now everything looks pretty good. So the first step is done. We've imported our model. If we take a look at our tree structure here, we can see that there's a number of different parts that make up our model, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So the next step is going to be to put some materials on it. So I'm going to come over here to my library tab, make sure that I have materials selected from the pull-down window here, and then we can maybe drag this out to make it more of a vertical column setup, and I can see all of the different folders that I have materials arranged in. So let's go right into our metallic paint folder and grab something fun like this monarch red, and we'll drag and drop that onto our sheet metal, and now we've painted the vehicle there. If we come into our metals, we could grab something like, um, let's see here, like a brushed stainless maybe for our rims. We'll drop that on our wheels. Fantastic. We can come into rubber, maybe grab a dense rubber for the tires. Great. Now when we come into glass, we can select a window glass for the windows themselves. We can adjust that here momentarily. Now I could also drag the window glass onto our headlamps as well. But one of the things I want to point out is that every time that you drag a material from the library, it's going to place that material here within your actual palette itself. And that's okay because what we're going to do a little bit later is we're going to adjust one of these window glasses to kind of tint it a little bit darker here. So let's go back into our library. We'll grab another metal. Let's go ahead and grab a chrome this time. And we'll drop that here on our grill. Fantastic. We'll use that same chrome here within our headlamps, so we don't need to grab anything new for that. And let's see here. We have some calipers. Let's grab a standard paint for those there. We'll go to paint and maybe just grab this red paint to drop on the calipers. Um, this material here on the rotor, let's see if we go to a metal and we can grab something like, um, well, let's take a look at this clear coat stainless steel that looks really nice fantastic so we have some basic materials here I need to put a material on my interior so what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna select the window glass and I can either right click on it to say hide parts or just hit control H on the keyboard so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that glass and now we can come back into something like our leathers and maybe grab uh, black leather to drop on our interior let's just make the interior dark that way it's just more or less a silhouette. Okay, great. So now I think we have enough materials here within our project to work with. And we come back to our materials tab. You can see here we have quite a few materials. So now let's go ahead and make a few adjustments. First thing I'm going to do here is right click and say show all. And that's going to bring the glass back. You can see here that the steering wheel is more of a lighter gray. But I'm going to leave that just to kind of have a little punchy detail going on there. Um, we can now select the window glass. And that's going to allow us to go ahead and drop the color value down a little bit to make that a little bit darker to start to tint that glass a little bit. It's not affecting the glass that we put on the headlamps here because we drag that in as a separate material and that glass will remain a nice clear glass. So we want to make some adjustments behind here. We're going to click on that glass and hit control H or right click to say hide. And now we can copy and paste a material from one part to another. So I'm going to hold down shift left click to copy the material from the grill. And while still holding my shift button down, I'm going to right click here within the headlamp to paste that chrome. I'm going to do the same thing here with the wheel. I'm going to shift left click and shift right click to paste that material that was kind of a brush stainless onto the other piece of this headlamp. So now when I right click and say show all, 
I should have a model that's pretty much completely painted with the exception of the tail lamps here in the rear. So let's go back into our library. We're on materials. I can select, let's see, if I go to, let's see what we have in our glass. Here's a nice red glass. Let's drop the red glass on there. And we can see here now that we have a couple of other pieces that need to be painted in chrome. So let's go back to our materials. We'll use the exact same chrome that we have here within our list. Drag this out a little. We'll grab our chrome, do a little drag and drop. Onto our chrome pieces here. Gonna have to zoom in a little bit to catch this one. There we go. Good looking tail lamp. Okay, so now our car is fully painted. If there were any adjustments that we wanted to make to our materials, we could just select those materials and start to make those adjustments there. So now that we've imported a model and we've put some materials on our model, we're now ready to set up our scene and adjust our environment so that we have a nice lighting environment and maybe a nice backplate for that. So the HDR that we have here looks okay, but it doesn't make up for a nice background. So maybe we wanted to have this type of lighting, but yet we wanted to have a nice clean background. If we come into our scenes area here, we can turn off the visibility of the HDR and that's going to show us just a background color and we can adjust that background color to be any color that we'd like. Maybe we do a somewhat of a, a red style background. We could even add some ground reflections and blur those ground reflections a bit just to kind of let that become a little bit of a, a, a studio style setting. If we wanted to, we could load a backplate. So if we came into our libraries here and we switch to plates, we could grab something like the spot floor. And all we have to do is drag and drop that plate. It'll tell us it's going to load a new backplate and that it's loading the studio spot floor JPEG. When I release the mouse, it's going to go ahead and load that. So now we have the HDR that was a bunch of light panels and a backplate that looks like it might be some type of studio setting. So we're starting to mix and match. If we wanted to, we can come back into our scene here. If we select that backplate, turn off the visibility there so we can now see our background again. When we come into the library and we select our environments, we could select a whole new setup. So let's go ahead and select our Route 66 HDR. We'll give that a moment to load. There we go. And so now we can make a few adjustments to that as well. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see what we have going on here. Um, we can see that it's a little bit large right now. So I'm going to bring the size down a little bit. And it looks like the rotation is also off a little. I want this to kind of match the direction of the car. So let's go ahead and bring that around. So now it's a little bit more aligned with the car. And we can even flatten the ground here just to kind of bring that ground up because now it's going to give the car something to kind of sit on here. And this will fall true with any type of geometry that you have. We just happen to be working with a car here. So now I could set up my camera angle. And I'm just about ready to start taking some pictures. But I'm going to go ahead and load a backplate to match this HDR. So if I come back into my plates here, you can see I've got a couple of Route 66 plates. I'm going to grab this one here. I kind of like this low to the ground angle type of shot. So now that back plate has been loaded. I know that the HDR is already facing the right direction. So now it's just a matter of composing the shot so that our car feels like it fits just right. Now as a little side tip here for you, if we come into our scenes and we move into a raster mode, You'll see down at the bottom of our, of our scene, we can turn on a grid. And this grid will allow us to kind of match the perspective that we might have in a backplate. So I can use this to kind of find where that ground plane might need to be for the camera that we have. So now if I turn off that show grid, I can see here that that looks like it fits and matches pretty well. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn my ray tracing back on. And now it's just a matter of adjusting the brightness of our HDR. So if I increase or decrease the brightness, it's going to increase or decrease the amount of light that we have on our geometry. So it's just a matter of finding just the right setting so that that object feels like it fits right in the scene quite nicely. That looks good, just a little bit of a bump there on the brightness. And now 
we're just about ready to go ahead and render. So now at this point, we can come up to our render button here up in our toolbar and we can select our ray trace render options. We can pick our resolutions, the quality or time that we wanna let it go for, and we can just go ahead and hit render. It's gonna go ahead and start that render and we'll have a finished image waiting in our image folder once it's done.